Hello again, everybody. It's Harry Boxer, the technical trader at thetechtrader.com. It is Tuesday night, the 16th of December, and um, markets are still shaky. We tried to rally. They looked really good in the morning, and then they rolled them over and closed the middle lows for the day. This market is not done yet. But there's some um, stocks acting great, and after hours, a couple of biotech stocks had some pretty good news, including Auspex Pharmaceuticals, ASPX. Here's a nice base, but look what happened after hours. One minute chart shows it exploded from 25 to 43, backed off to 39, and closed at 41 after hours, up 16 points. Now, a stock like this, when you look at the daily chart, spiking up to 41, blows through everything except for, well, yeah, even, even through its uh, IPO price. So this is a major new uh, move for the stock. And being up at 41, I would not be surprised to see tomorrow's action here roll it up into the mid-40s, and that's what I'll be looking for. Keep an eye on this tomorrow. Let's see what happens. CERS also exploded on, on drug news. Um, that one in particular, um, FDA-approved intercept blood systems for plasma. Anyway, the stock you can see in just a few minutes jumped from 477 to 642, came all the way down to 530, and jumped right back to 620 before settling into 578. It's up a dollar. Um, it looks to me like this could be some sort of post-after-hours large coil. And if it pops tomorrow, we could see some extension, maybe six and a half, three quarters, or even seven. Let's see if we can get make a scalp trade out of that one tomorrow. Here's your daily chart one more time. You can see the big base pattern, and it started to emerge recently and popped with the stock trading, like I said, up in that six and quarter and a half range after hours. Could be significant. Um, the next target up here is around seven, and then up around eight. Those are your two resistance levels going forward for uh, Ceres Corp. Well, CY has been great since we mentioned it, and since the gap and the takeover of the, or the merger with code, we gapped up and we've been running up in a nice tight channel. This is two weeks now, and it's still moving. Didn't get into it in the 12 range like I wanted. Here it is up 14 today, 14.28. Um, there is some lateral resistance in its zone, as you can see, but it's a beautiful base pattern. Over the course of the last couple of years, and uh, this breakout here could be significant. We may see the stock eventually move into the high teens and look up for 19.20 on an intermediate basis. Short term, though, I'd love to see a pullback set up for an entry out. Lamel, one of our swing trades, acting great. There was a big reversal day here. Note, though, that it's having a difficult time getting through 1740, and that's the level we're going to look for. If it gets through there, looking for 19 and 21. INFN, I just want to show you how well this swing trade idea has been holding. A beautiful coil after it popped and pulled back. Tried to go again. Volume wasn't heavy enough. It pulled back. But the overall structure is terrific. I like the break of the major base pattern in here and the run-up. The target next would be that line up here around 16. Beyond that, 18 and 20. Navigen, well, spectacular day for NVGN. Just want to show you the one-minute chart again. It was a beauty. This is the way I like to trade them. You get a stock that acts like this during a session. It pops, pulls back, gives you an entry up in that area, stair steps its way all the way up, barely breaking support. Now, it did break a couple support levels that I get, a couple stop levels that I gave you earlier today. Dried just a little bit in here, exploded again, and managed to get just under 6 at 597 before drifting back to 529. Nevertheless, a big 200% gain plus today. And you don't see that too often, so congrats on that. But what's the significance of this move? Well, you can see where the stock was trading at a buck and a half, three quarters, and uh, closing at like $1.75 yesterday or 77. It opens at uh, three and a half and runs up to six almost. So. Major, major um, overhead resistance up in that area. But look at this one. The major declining tops line, it tagged it exactly today. So there's going to be difficulty getting through that level. But the kind of volume of 19 million shares that's never been seen in this stock before, with the breakaway gap that big through all these moving averages and price resistance levels and up to secondary resistance, could see some follow through. And I would not be shocked to see as much as seven or better tomorrow. But let's see if we get a pullback and it's just a one day wonder or not. OAS, well, um, it's an oil, an oil stock that I know pretty well, and I wasn't, wasn't surprised to see them all roll over, but 57 
down to 11, 10 and change, all losing 80 some odd percent of its value that quickly. I'm not surprised it snapped up. But the reason I put a swing trade on it late today is when I looked at the total volume here of 16 and a half million, bigger than all the down days they've had recently, perhaps a key reversal day. I'm giving you a target up around 17 and a half, 18, which is the swing trade target right up there, but it could very well make it up even as high as 22, two and a half. It runs up to that gap. But first things first, let's get a follow through and let's get it up towards 17, 17 and a quarter, half area here. And then we'll see if it can, if we get that follow through. Of course, that's what we're looking for. Another junior oil that I like a lot is Range Resources. I'm not so much of a junior oil anymore. It's actually uh, more of an intermediate. But you can see that today, stock exploded from the 55 area to 61. Now that was resistance, so it backed off of there, but it was still up to 82 or 5%. And five and three quarter million, which by the way happens to be the biggest volume I've ever seen in a stock. So because there's resistance there, I didn't put a swing out on it necessarily, but over 61, one and a quarter, I could see the stock making it up to test secondary resistance 65, maybe even makes it a 70, 72. But for now, um, I'm, I'm going to keep a close eye on this one for trading purposes, should it pull back gently. Or if it breaks out tomorrow, we may see a follow through trade that gets it up to 66. Big move in the last four days in Sorrento. Look at this. Exploded from four and a quarter and got up to 8.40 today, nearly doubling in just four sessions. Now, I didn't even look at the news or why, but here's the major breakout right there. Secondary breakout there. There is some resistance at today's high. Should we follow through this level? I would not be shocked to see this one make it up to the uh, first 10 range and then maybe even as high as 11. So 10 and 11 are targets going forward, but it's long in the tooth and you may see a pullback retest. Nevertheless, very nice momentum in this one and great volume the last two sessions. SWIR, I'm really amazed at technically how well this has held up. Look at the long term chart. Now this stock has run from the 6 7 range all the way into the 40s and taken out major long term resistance. Now check this out 19, in 2004. The stock traded at 45 and change, and today it's in the low 40s. So you may get a run up near there. And if we do, that would be my near term target. Obviously, the longer term target would be upwards of 80, but I'm not prepared to give you that forecast just yet. In the meantime, let's look for it to see what it does up here near 46.7, my near term target. Very great momentum. Look, look at the way this chart is held up in this market. Talk about relative strength, this is outstanding. And there's your stop if you're interested on the 35 and three quarters. Taser, now um, I want to show you the, form, the way it's forming a little coil or wedge on lower volume within the confines of the rising channel. But after hours, a little bit of a tick up. As you can see, the stock closed at 22.85 and traded up to 23.5. Something may be brewing there, we'll have to see. But in any case, Expect the possibility of a strong opening tomorrow, and if it gets up, uh, we could see. I'm still looking for that 28 level, maybe as high as 32, 33 in immediate basis, but it still has good momentum as far as I'm concerned. And lastly today, look at the UVXY, and boy, did that ever make a big move in the last few sessions. This has already gone from 17 and change to 31 and change, and after pulling back, what a reversal today from 25 and a half to 31 and a half, six points. And closing near the high for the, for the range going away. Now, after hours, it did drift back a little bit. But what a nice late move this one had. Glad we caught that. But more importantly, if the market does not follow through to the upside and follows through to the downside, we may uh, my targets for tomorrow are going to be 35 and then spike up towards 40 plus. But hard to say with this stock. It's very volatile, and you can see that when it does run, it can explode. Right now, it's in that explosive mode. I really like the fact that it backed off and held yesterday's low. It came on and had an engulfing day today, and closing at the high for the range. Very bullish. It wouldn't surprise me if this gapped up tomorrow morning. We'll just have to see how it goes. Um, a quick look at some of the boxes shorts that uh, some of our swing shorts. I wanted you to see this. Uh, four of them that have done very well recently. Kihu today dropped another 413 or seven percent nearly. And the volume was four three quarter million shares, so picking up on the downside as it's breaking. And uh, we're at a point now, if it does not hold this, Kihu could start to fall away rather rapidly. 